At first, this was supposed to be a review for a completely different card, but then I got a hold of this gem, and I just had to stick it to my testing ring and start playing with it, with the card that is. This is the first sound card Grab is produced, and I've never seen it with my own eyes before, or heard how it sounds for the matter. I used to own plug and play version, which I currently own once again and I wonder how these two compare. This card utilizes GF1 chip made by Gravis. Couple of revisions of this card came out, I know 5. This is the last one. There were some slight design and functionality differences. For example, this revision is the first ultrasound card that has mixing abilities. Earlier versions didn't include mixer chip. It also lacks the ability to record 16-bit audio. To do that, you need a 16-bit daughter board connected here. On the other hand, it was one of the first sound cards that could play 16-bit 44kHz sounds. There's only 256 kilobytes of onboard memory for instrument patches. So if you don't want your Gravis to sound like crap, upgrading memory to 1 megabyte is a must. What Gravis did extremely right is their system of instrument patches. Every instrument got its own file which you can swap for your own. It's extremely fast and easy way to replace instruments you don't fancy. I tested everything with default instruments as they were provided by the installation program. And as always, I recorded some MIDI files, this time with the Gravis' own player where I used default set of instruments, but also different set which I found on the net. What Gravis did extremely wrong, however, is compatibility with Sound Blaster. It doesn't support Sound Blaster natively, you need a software emulator. There are currently three emulators for Gravis out there. First one is SBOS, which is a pure Sound Blaster emulator. Second one is MegaM, which emulates Sound Blaster and General MIDI or Roland LAPC SCC and MT32. On the last one is Ultramid. It is kind of software DSP processor. Since Gravis doesn't have DSP hardware processor, it depends on a software version which is needed in some games or software. For each game, I had to try all of the emulators since almost every game works just with one of them. And the others are crashing computer. To be perfectly honest, it was hell to make this shit, I mean gem, work. First, it was drivers. I've got just the card without any software or anything. So I had to search the net and I found about 485 million versions of drivers. I downloaded all of them and tried which one works the best. Also, I used the latest versions of all emulators. Alright, let's see how we can handle actual games. First one is Alone in the Dark. On right from the start, it doesn't have native support for Grammys. Well, I had to use SBOS emulators, set Sound Blaster for sound and the same for music. It doesn't sound bad. It sounds completely different from actual Sound Blaster, but not bad. That's actually pretty good for such an old card. I recorded some music using MIDI files, some of them are sick. At last, one game with native support, Doom. I just set ultrasound for music and sound and ran the game. Take a listen.
Same goes for them too. I just hit ultrasound in the setup and I'm ready to go. However, when I started the game, I heard this. Is it just me or the drums are way off? Actually, all the instruments are off. When I recorded Doom 1 from the Midifier Lancer, it sounds exactly as in the game. Doom 2, on the other hand, sounds very different. It seems like it's using wrong instruments. This is the game. And this is the Midifier. Use go native support as well, so no problem there. Another game, another problem. Even though Dungeon Master 2 supports Gravis natively, it simply doesn't work for music, only sound. But I found some patch that fixes this issue. It sounds cracking. To get Gabriel and I working, you also need a patch. This patch is for multiple Sierra games. I just copy the patch files into the game's root, ran the patch with specific init file as a switch, it loaded instruments into the memory and that's it. Some of the songs are pretty good. Some are okay. Your messages. No. You're lively. And some are simply horrible. Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Native support, perfect. Magic Carpet 2, same thing. I am free. Rise of the Triad, again, native support, sounds brilliant. After all those games before, it didn't take me very long to figure out how to set up Simon the Sorcerer. It supports Gravis only for sound effects, so I had to run Mega M emulator and set the music to MT32. Okay, gobos, this magic paper brings food. I thought I heard something. Alizigi, Alizagi. Spice Quest 1. There's a patch for some Sierra games that adds general MIDI support that includes Space Quest 1. However, the patch is not necessary if you want to use Gravis. You need to run Mega M Emulator with or without patch anyway and choosing general MIDI over MT32 changes nothing in terms of instruments or music quality. I found similar patch for Space Quest 5, which adds Gravis option to set up. But whatever I did, I couldn't make the bloody game working. It whined about low memory whatever I did. I tried different email managers, different switches, different options, and in the end, I couldn't make it work. The only way I found it was working was running Mega M Emulator and select General MIDI as a music driver. Unfortunately, whatever I've chosen as a sound driver, it didn't work.
TFX is an interesting one. There are two versions, CD and diskette version, I tried both. It's got native support for Gravis, but the game was always crashing during startup, until I applied patch number 3. Even though it supports Gravis natively, the support is only for sound. When you choose Gravis in the setup, it disables MIDI completely. To make MIDI work, I had to run Mega M Emulator. I tried all the options for MIDI in the setup and all of them worked. Each driver sounded entirely different than the other. Take a listen. The only way to get both sound and music working is to get CD version. Set Gravis as a sound driver and CD for music. The dig, everything's perfect. Howdy, Brink. Welcome to the place where geology and astronomy meet. A professor once told me, astronomers are geologists with clean hands and a squint. Same goes for Time Commander. Its music sounds brilliant. No problem with Tower Assault either. Ultima 8 uses the same patch as Bioforge, which means only MIDI and no sound. Warcraft 2 works flawlessly. Which of you five would like to play a little game? I have no mouth and I must scream works cracking as well. What hell hold did that godless machine put me in this time? Looks like some kind of ship, but the floor is too steady. Probably wants me to jump overboard. And into what? A sea of razor blades? Painful, but not deadly. On the safe for the games. Next is a recording of a silence and then boost it to 12 dB to see how clean the output is. That's actually pretty good for such an old card. On the conclusion, if you are a masochist, yeah, go for it. It's got really good wavetable, better than, for example, Sound Blaster 32. But the horror with getting games working can put somebody off. Once as you heard, in some games, it's a far cry from good. In the rest, on the other hand, it's just brilliant. Output is super clean, considering the age. For retro gaming, I'd get Gravis and some other card compatible with Sound Blaster. Grab is for games with native support and the other card for the rest. Its wavetable is really cracking, as you will hear at the end of this video. I'll include download links for all the drivers I used, all possible patches I found for all the games, and of course all recorded music. Catch you next time and enjoy the music.